well, when I joined, uh, you rend, you don't choose, you just uh, get put into the one they thought is most suitable. And I um, was sent to HMS Glendower, which is uh, Butlin's holiday camp, but given a better name. And I was there for two years, and you covered pretty well everything. You were taught all the signalling and the coding and the ciphering and all that sort of thing. And um, then I was drafted down to Southampton, that's where I met my husband, and then um, back to the, to the HMS Shrapnel, and that was where we concentrated on the movement of all ships that were going to take part in the Second Front. And um, it's worked, you know, 24-hour shifts and um, just tagged along. The doodle bugs were flying over and different things, you had all that went on. Coming from up this way, I was very interested to know what was happening because I was coming from West Kirby. And um, but you, once you got away down to the south, um, you didn't, people didn't talk about it very much. There was a lot of secrecy about it all, you see. And um, you only got told when ships were sunk, put it over the Tannoy, you know, and that sort of thing. Was different ships, not all ships, not cargo ships, big ships you're talking about. Um, and it just became part of your life, that you accepted everything that happened. And um, when the, uh, the watch was the one that was blown up in Scrapper Flow, that was terrible, you know, it was the Hood, HMS Hood. Um, it makes you realise just how awful it was everywhere else. You were in your little bit that you just um, carried on and hoped it would all go well. And tell us a little bit about what your husband did. Yes, well, George was in the Merchant Navy. He was a Geordie, and he, he'd been at sea all his life from a boy, um, didn't want to do anything else. And when the war was called up, of course, he was already at sea and in the Merchant Navy. Um, and he was on the PQ-17 convoy, um, which was scattered. Dudley Pound gave the signal for to scatter the convoy, and, and that's what happened. And um, I think out of the 35 odd ships that were in the convoy, there's about four or five of them actually got through. George's ship was the Commodore's ship, which was the River Afton. Um, that was sunk. He was picked up and taken to Mamansk, and uh, he was there for three months. And um, he used to say that. If he thought it was bad on the convoys, um, the three months in the Mansk were pretty awful too, because the Russians were very wary. Because obviously these men looked like it could have been anything, all dripping in oil and goodness knows what, and no clothes, and you know everything was uh, weird. They didn't know who they were, couldn't speak English, they couldn't speak Russian, and um, there were armed guards everywhere. And then he got his ship back to England motor vessel, HMS leader, and that sunk, torpedoed, and again he was picked up by the um, trawler, the uh, Northern Gem, and taken to Glasgow. So uh, that is when, after he'd been home on sick leave, um, he was sent then down to Southampton and to do the Pluto part of that part of the war had got to then, you see. And were you and he together then? You... Well, no, I didn't meet him until he went to, when I, until I went to Southampton, and he came to Southampton, yeah. you see. And um, it was only then, and when he was speaking to me, I couldn't understand him anyway. He was a Georgie, and I'd never heard a Georgie. <laughs> and I couldn't understand what he was saying. We were having a drink, and what you do, he went out and... and, and I couldn't understand what he was saying, but I said to him, what part of Scotland do you come from? So he got up and danced a <laughs> Very upset about that. But I didn't know. It sounded like Scotch to me. But um, anyway, we were married in Southampton. And then um, after the, the push on into the other side, the second front, we lived ashore. And um, it's a couple who took us in their home and made us very welcome, elderly couple. And, uh, and then, of course, as soon as the war was over, which didn't last very long after that, um, 
the war ended, and we, I was demobbed because the married women were the first ones yeah. to get booted out. And so um, that was the end of my career in the, in the Navy.